Hello, everybody. Well, the first fuse are coming. It doesn't look that bad. Okay. My name is David Eikeberg. I'm the founder and owner of Touchdown Event Solutions, live entertainment, and live business, and live communication, better to say. I'm my business and my passion for more than 35 years now. Um, and I have the great privilege to guide you through the following three hours of the ITB Maestrick 2024. So please stay with us. We're going to have a, few, a lot of very interesting things for you. Follow us, though, then for an interesting journey through a lot of fascinating facets of a business. And if you, during one of the sessions, feel like asking a question or have a meaningful input for us, uh, please do not hesitate to show up with your hand or shout at me. No. <laughs> show up with your hand. We're going to see if we're going to still be able to fit in your question. Right. Okay. On we go. First speaker today. She's the Director of Marketing at Meeting Professionals International, which all of you definitely know as MPI, don't you? Okay, to shortly introduce her is almost impossible, but I'll do my best. 20 years in the business, a huge success record at every company she's worked for and with every job she's ever done. From events coordinator to director of admissions, from business development lead to marketing director. Oh, and in between, by the way, she founded an own business as well. Pretty amazing, in my opinion. I'm sure we can expect a very interesting session from her. Please welcome to the stage, Corey Elford. Hello, everyone. Thank you, David. I am so excited to be here. This is my first ITB. Um, I am going to give everybody fair warning that I'm going to have you interact because we are here to learn about engagement. So some of you might want to get closer or maybe sit next to somebody. So just heads up on that. <clears throat> on behalf of uh, Meeting Professionals International, we are so excited to be able to decode what we're calling the engagement equation. It's a blueprint for turning meetings and events into a journey of meaningful experiences. But since we are here to learn about engagement, I would love for everyone to take a quick moment, turn to a neighbor, could be hopefully somebody you don't know, and I would love for you to introduce yourself by your childhood nickname. You can go ahead and tell the story of how you earned the childhood nickname if you'd like, but I'll go ahead and give you a minute, go. Okay, I already see some cards being exchanged. That is awesome. Love it. We're going to go ahead and move on, but please continue those conversations later. I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. I know David did a good job, but he doesn't know a few things about me. Um, I did see a lot of, uh, of good conversations. There's a few of you I want to I wanna introduce myself to later because I definitely saw some laughs and uh, I need to hear some stories. But um, <clears throat> yes, my name is Corey Elford. There was a brief period of time in my life where I was also called Corey Cupcake. Uh, to give you the backstory on that, I was probably about five years old and my grandparents were in town and I mean, grandparents, they come in town, they're always baking something delicious, right? Uh, this particular time, my grandmother made my favorite chocolate cupcakes with white icing. And in our household, you are not allowed to get dessert unless you finish everything on your plate. So my sister, my parents, my grandparents, they finished all their food, they were eating their cupcake, and I had something disgusting on my plate, like broccoli or squash, which by the way, I, I eat both now. But at the time, I, I didn't like it, and so I just started bawling. 
I was hysterical because I thought there weren't going to be any more cupcakes left for me. And so as my dear grandfather, he uh, very lovingly looked at me and said, Corey, don't worry, finish your food. There's a cupcake over there with your name on it. Well, I finish my food, I walk into the kitchen, and I start bawling. There is no cupcake with my name on it. So like a good, loving grandfather, he found some red icing and he physically wrote Corey on top of my cupcake. And so to this day, every now and again, I am still called Corey Cupcake. But most people know me as Corey Elford, Director of Marketing at Meeting Professionals International. Um, I actually consider myself a transplant, transplant in the meetings and events industry. I have a very heavy background in advertising and branding. And um, my main focus is usually on branding, uh, loyalty, and engagement. Within MPI, I have the joy of working very closely with our events team to build brand awareness and to foster lasting engagement through our events. Show of hands, any uh, MPI members in the room? No, that's actually a good thing. I love to see that. So for those of you that aren't aware of Meeting Professionals International, we are the largest mice association in Europe. Uh, we have over 70 clubs and chapters worldwide, and we predominantly exist to empower the meetings and events industry through education, through networking opportunities, and uh, through research. And our mission is to help make meetings and events more impactful. My main goal for everyone in this room today is to be able to leave being able to answer this one question. How do we make attending meetings and events a can't miss opportunity in today's world? Seems like it would be really easy, right? But I think we're all gathered here today because we know that it's not. So in our short time together, we're going to understand the importance of engagement emphasizing that it needs to be designed and thoughtfully to create meaningful experiences. I'm also going to show you how to utilize new formats of engagement, and we're going to talk through some very quick strategies on how you can apply that to have a more improved participant experience. And then we're going to take a very brief, brief deep dive into how the 19 elements of engagement can be selectively applied based on your audience and your event objectives. But first, I want to take a moment and just step back and think about how much our landscape has changed over the last couple of years. Everyone in this room knows that it looks completely different. And we know some of that's been fast-tracked because of the pandemic. But there are new stakeholders that have entered the chat that we have to consider now, like marketers, data and analytics, IT, security and legal. We have new technology adaptations we have to consider, like AI and <clears throat> how to help organizations achieve sustainability goals. We have to think about cybersecurity and PII policies. And we have a more widespread use of digital events. We also have a new focus on our participants' wants and needs and how we can deliver truly unique experiences. This list is never ending. And who none other to handle all of this but the role of the event strategist. We are the ones that have to keep the plates spinning. Our role is more multifaceted now than it ever has been before. We are responsible for utilizing engagement to address issues, to enhance relationships, to involve thinking, to be able to apply learning and facilitate change. And we have to do this in measurable and meaningful ways. We also need to create strategies for meaningful connections, leveraging these innovative methods and ensure that our event delivers on its goals or we lose our customers' loyalty forever. So what is the solution? We implement strategic forms of engagement. That means that we use engagement as a tool to solve problems. When we engage, we turn challenges into opportunities for growth and innovation. 
Through engagement, we can actively participate. We can build more stronger, resilient relationships. And we can collaborate beyond the event itself. Engagement also stimulates our minds. And we can shift our perspectives. It's about being able to nurture an environment where our ideas can flourish. And we can use engagement to apply our learning. Ultimately, engagement is about driving change. It's the force that propels us forward, ensuring that the impact of our event goes far beyond our measurable and meaningful expectations. So in order to do this effectively, we need to be able to easily define what meaningful engagement means. It means not just learning by hearing facts, but being involved and using what we already know. It means being able to understand how learning applies to us personally, answering the what's in it for me question on our own. It means appreciating when our background and life experiences are considered in the learning process. And being able to retain information better when we're actively involved in the learning environment. When our physical comfort is considered, when we are given relevant examples and opportunities to practice new skills. So what is the right methodology to do this? Some of you may be familiar with an international PR firm called Weber Shanwick. They're one of the leading public relations firms in the world. They have offices in 81 countries, and they won numerous awards for innovative approaches and creative campaigns. They have a particular expertise in digital marketing and social media, and they have a consumer insights agency called Canvas 8. Canvas 8 gives media and communications professionals a strategic edge by tracking global and behavioral change and analyzing people's relationships with media and brands. They've developed this report, and it's free. If you're curious and want to read it all, you can go online and look it up. But it's called The Science of Engagement. And it emphasizes that engagement is a limited resource and that engaging effectively with audiences requires a very strategic approach. The report also outlines 10 principles of engagement, recognizing that engagement is not a simple on and off state, but it's more varies in intensity, much more like a light dimmer. And this is really important in today's world where our consumer attention is divided across many channels. Negative emotions have a much stronger impact than positive ones. I don't know about any of you, but whenever I have a terrible experience, I am very emotionally charged to go online and write about it, whether it's a review on Yelp or whatever it may be. But when I have a good experience, most of the time I just tell my friends or my family. So I am gonna have you guys do another little exercise, very short. Um, I would love for you to turn to somebody next to you, could be the person you introduced yourself to earlier, but I want you to quickly talk about the worst event experience you've ever had and why, and the best experience you've ever had and why. And I really want you to think hard about what caused them to be so exceptional or so terrible. I'll give you a couple minutes.
about 20 more seconds. Okay, if you didn't finish those conversations, I highly recommend that you pick them back up after we're done today. I was trying to eavesdrop on some of y'all's uh, conversations. Yes, I said y'all, I'm from Dallas, Texas. <clears throat> so in your stories, I want you to think about how successful engagement can be applied. Engagement is something that needs to be mutually beneficial. If we want someone's time and attention, we need to be able to offer them something valuable in return. It should also have an incentive attached to it. Humans make quick decisions based on the anticipation of immediate rewards. So enhancing the uh, promise of, uh, enhancing the customer experience is very important. You can, can consider things like contests or sweepstakes. And engagement can be most effective when it's built up over time in layers, such as a compelling story coupled with uh, interaction and shared values. Engagement can also strive to align actual experience with, cus with customer expectations, because when expectations aren't met, we actually get disengagement. And lastly, Successful engagement should be planned out thoughtfully, and we should be able to identify and implement our audience's personal motivators. And we do that through the 19 elements. I know this seems like a lot, but we're gonna hit the highlights today. These are the blueprint for creating a truly unique and engaging experience. The science of engagement studies identifies these 19 elements that act as personal motivators. And what do I mean by personal motivators? Personal motivators are something that's unique to you that drives you into action. It motivates you to do something. It makes you feel good. These include things like aesthetics, association, desire, empathy, and they suggest that visual engagement, connecting new information with existing knowledge, anticipating rewards, can help people effectively engage. And it's also important to note that not all elements apply to all brands, industries, and organizations. And beyond that, different industries and organizations can expect to have different levels of engagement. Careful selection and blending of these elements increases engagement. And so I'm only gonna explore these today through the lens of creating engagement among attendees, but they can and should be applied to all aspects of the event design experience. Take a second and look at these 19, and I want you to think about what your personal motivator would be. You may wanna write it down. I also want you to identify what you think the top three personal motivators would be for you, the top three elements for your audience or your customer. And you may wanna write that down too as we go through these. Now, quick note, these are not organized in any special order, they're just listed. The first one is access. How easy is it to obtain something? How much friction is there? I immediately think of the registration process for an event. Is it smooth? Is it fast? Is it easy to click add to cart? When we're faced with a range of choices, people's selection is most often based on, off of convenience. Aesthetics, we're human beings, we love beautiful things. Beautiful things help us engage. Associations, not like MPI, but you should definitely consider joining MPI. What I mean by associations are things like good memories, nostalgic smells, conversations, belonging. People gather in groups, families, teams, friends. How do we use affinity and common interest to build engagement? We can think of things like spectrograms, badges, colors, signs. 
desire. Desire is created by a sense of lacking. How are we finding and fulfilling on what our attendees' needs and wants are that they're not getting somewhere else? I went to an event a couple, well, really it was a year and a half ago, and uh, this particular event is um, held in Salt Lake City, and uh, they had something called the Dream Team. And this was the most incredible thing I've ever seen, but it, within their event app, you could request a dream. It could really be almost anything as long as it wasn't dangerous. And they had an entire team of people there who would fulfill these dreams for you. So I would be sitting there in a session and someone would get a six pack of beer delivered to them or some chapstick or a new blazer. It was incredible. And these are, in the marketing world, what we also like to call surprise and delights, it's something extremely unexpected, and it definitely heightened my level of engagement. If you're curious, I have two children. I asked them because I wasn't gonna have time to walk around Salt Lake City, so I asked them to get me some little trinkets for my kids, and that's what they did. They got these really adorable little, little stuffed animals. Enhancement. Enhancement is self-improvement. People are competitive and want to get ahead. Enhancement is elemental to learning, and engagement can help us learn. Certificates are a great example of this. Badging, master classes, escape. Escape is one of my favorite ones, because who doesn't want to escape from reality from time to time? We think about the concept of leisure, which is the combination of business and leisure activities. Um, things like open spaces, or no agendas, or free time. Experience. This one's easy. You have a good experience, you're more engaged. But you can think about something like, how do you connect with your customers post-event? What kind of experience does that look like? Herd behavior, also a great one to talk about. Herd behavior and following the crowd. Everyone knows it just takes that one person to raise their hand and ask that first question before everyone else in the room all of a sudden feels more comfortable. Integrity. Integrity is honesty and transparency. It's doing what's right and it builds trust. CSR activities are great for this and so are social and environmental issues. Intrigue. Intrigue and curiosity sparks engagement. Escape rooms, secret puzzles, hidden surprises. I mentioned surprise and delight. Uh, we had a sponsor at one of our events who um, completely did a whole build out in the bathrooms. And I mean, you walked into the bathroom and it was completely transformed. They had wallpaper, they had scents on the counter, they had bathroom attendants, mints, all these things, it was incredible. Involvement. Involvement is developed through ownership or investment and it builds over time. You could use your community members to help you build your schedule or ask volunteers to participate early and often. Meaning. Meaning gives people direction. CSR activities are great for this. So is solving a collective problem together. Newness. Newness captures your attention in the short term, but we also think about things like new technology. Pleasure. Pleasure is a sensory experience. Is your food and beverage at your event exceptionally delicious? I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and she said she went to an event. She told me nothing of the event, but she said that the coffee was the worst coffee she had ever had in her entire life. She said it was brown water. And you think of how much money she paid to go to that event, and that was her biggest takeaway. You do not want that to be you. <laughs> Respect. Think about meeting visionaries or industry icons. Solution storming and hackathons are great for these. Social ladders. How are we removing social barriers through formats and uniting people on common interests? I think about how we can get the CEO to interact with the intern in a meaningful way. Or maybe separating people into cohorts and having them uh, meet with people that aren't in their uh, industry or vertical. 
So here they are again, all 19. Take a look at the personal one that you wrote down earlier. Did it change? If you were to rank the top three for your customer, which ones would you choose and did those change? As you leave today, I want you to take a critical look at what you've decided and really think about where you're excelling and where you might be falling short. And the beauty of this is that it could change every single time for every single event. When you apply this philosophy in the real world, you want to be able to identify your event's core objectives and what to achieve. Is it learning? Is it networking? Is it innovation? Is it none of those things? You want to be able to consider your audience and really understand who your attendees are and what they value most. Having this knowledge is going to guide you in how you choose your elements. Then you want to evaluate each element's impact briefly assessing how each one could potentially enhance engagement and create your memorable experiences. Thank you so much for your time and attention today. Hopefully you found this information valuable. As event professionals, we understand how important it is for us to have make of meetings and events a can't miss opportunity in today's world. As a thank you for joining me today, MPI would love to provide you with an exclusive gift of 20% off membership. You can scan the QR code here for more information and find out a little bit more about what it means to be a part of a community like MPI. I also have my colleague here, Michael Cater, at our booth, should you have any additional questions or you did want to learn more. May the rest of your ITB experience be an extremely engaging one. Thank you.